Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedom and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country. In the courtrooms of America, Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedom. On today's Faith and Freedom, I want to talk to you about two Americas, one Lord and one hope. I am Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me is Matt Barber. Matt, I recently returned from Peru, and it was quite an eye-opening experience. I was invited there by a congressman who was a pastor up until 2011, and he ran for office. And he's one of about 130 members of Congress. It's a unicameral system. And his name is Congressman uh, Rosas, and he invited me to come to uh, Lima, Peru, and I had an opportunity to speak to Congress and also the head of the attorneys and the head of the judiciary and the head of all the educational accrediting body as well. And I thought when I came to Peru speaking to Congress, I was only going to speak to maybe a half dozen or a dozen people in a big open floor. Uh, people that were very similar in thought to me, but instead I was uh, amazingly surprised by what I saw. Well, they rolled out the red carpet for you, and and the way that you were treated and the uh, audience that you were given tells me a lot of things, and I know you experienced this while you're there as well, that that they're in Peru, at least, they're tired of uh, having to live out some of the end results that we see with secular progressivism taking root around the world. And uh, people are, I think, thirsting, starting to thirst around the world, including in Peru, for a return to the transcendent values uh, uh, that are really should be inherent with any uh, uh, cultural representation of law and public Well, and policy. I think, too, in Peru, the even more so is that they still retain a Judeo-Christian foundation, yeah. much different than what we have in the United States, something that we used to have, uh, but something has been eroded away. And the, so it's much more of a Judeo-Christian worldview from which everybody operates. No matter what political party or what religion you are part of, you can have a common dialogue. And one of the things that they are concerned with is that America is trying to undermine that Judeo-Christian foundation, particularly the Obama administration, is uh, funding uh, through the State Department and other ways uh, pro-abortion initiatives, pro-LGBT initiatives, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, etc., and same-sex marriage initiatives in a country that has in its constitution, the very first article of its constitution, protects the sanctity of human life from the moment of conception. So that is primary. You know, we've always talked about life is the right of all rights. Um, without the right to life, there are no other rights. The Peruvian constitution starts off with the human dignity yeah of the individual and protection of individuals from the moment of conception in the womb. Uh, that is the very first uh, section of the Peruvian Constitution. So it is very important to them, and uh, they are very concerned that America is undermining it. So consequently, when we came, they looked to us uh, for somebody who helped, could help them, and they knew everything about what we were about. They knew about cases that Liberty Council was involved with. They knew about my involvement in education, and they knew about all these different areas. So when I spoke to Congress, I was supposed to be there at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning on a Thursday, and I was there in this uh, room. I looked out uh, through the uh, uh, chamber, which was the Senate chamber, and uh, we had to delay the meeting uh, until about 10.30 because it was packed. <laughs> and people were standing in the aisles and standing in other places. They had put in an extra row of seats, and there was at least 100 people, attorneys from around Peru, uh, that could not get in. They were standing out in the aisle, and they could not get into this event. Sitting on the very front row was a general of the Peruvian Navy. He had all of his uh, regalia on. Next to him was another high-ranking member of the military, Navy SEALs, members of Congress, judges. The number one person over all of the attorneys in Peru is sitting at the table with me. He's co-sponsored this event. And there's educators, there's teachers, there's young people. And my message was about worldview and uh, two different worldviews, one with God and one without God, and how it makes a difference in law and policy. And then I took it down to specifics such as abortion and marriage 
and that these are part of God's natural created order, that there's a sanctity of human life because we are created in God's image, and marriage is part of God's natural created order, and it is part of the very first form of government, and that we must protect those. And I encourage the Peruvians to stand strong. So after that, uh, we got a, an ovation, standing uh, ovation there, and to my amazement then, the next part of the ceremony, was they uh, awarded me a Congressional Medal of Honor, which was stunning. I had no idea. This was far and above all that I could have imagined. I never envisioned this taking place. An unbelievable uh, reception and an unbelievable honor, Matt. And I, and I think they, they recognized uh, in advance of your even arriving that, that uh, through, you know, we're engaged in a trial by fire here in the United States. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we're in a position now where America's primary export is wickedness. Uh, we are pushing a culture of death on the rest of the world with radical pro-abortion policies. We're, we're pushing the uh, the sexual anarchist agenda that would undermine the Judeo-Christian sexual ethic. And and uh, your the reception that you received to me is very encouraging. Now you keep saying we. You weren't you weren't alone. Uh, who, who was with you during this? Well, I was. Uh, uh, Dr. Yuri Mantia yeah. was with me, and he speaks uh, fluent uh, Spanish, of course. He's from Bolivia. And he also spoke to the uh, uh, Senate uh, as well. And uh, Dr. Mantia and uh, Congressman Rosas and, and I, after uh, uh, speaking in the uh, Congress, we then met with the number one person over all of the attorneys. There's one bar association. We met with that individual. I talked to him. Uh, he was there co-sponsoring that event. And then uh, we were led by him into another room. And in that room, there were people that were gathered, and uh, he spoke about uh, the message, and I spoke, and then they gave me another a medal from <laughs> the uh, Peruvian College of Lawyers, which is the bar association of all lawyers, and then they gave me an honorary membership. It was, it was amazing. The next day, Matt, it continued on, and uh, we met with the uh, top uh, person over all the uh, education accreditation for all colleges and universities in Peru met with that person in a private meeting, and then uh, he led us to another room, and there's uh, chancellors and educators from all over Peru, and again, they honored us in another meeting. And while someone was introducing me, reading my CV, he got to the point of Liberty Council, and he says, and they defend <clears throat> traditional marriage as the union of one man and one woman. He's very emphatic about that. And at the end of that, uh, they gave me a medal again. I mean, this was <laughs> stunning. I was just uh, amazed at what was happening. And then they gave a toast to uh, us, and then uh, the president of that uh, institution had to leave after the toast was over because we had gone longer than anticipated, and he was going directly into a meeting with the president of Peru. Now, you mentioned that, that Peru, the culture there, is still steeped in the, uh, the Judeo-Christian uh, uh, and Judeo-Christian principles, biblical values, certainly uh, across the board. W were, do you think that part of your reception that, that you received and the overwhelming encouragement and the many honors that you received has anything to do with the fact that, that the people there are recognizing the threat from abroad to Judeo-Christian ethics? Uh, they are, and uh, I think it was supernatural that God opened up these doors because even people that are there and the congressman was amazed at the reception. He had no idea. Uh, that these kinds of things would happen. I even met with the uh, head of all the judiciary, and um, he was in a ceremonial public uh, meeting with the uh, chief of the Me Mexico Supreme Court and the head of the Inter-American Court on Human Rights, and he came from that meeting, sent them on to lunch while he met with us for 40 minutes. I mean, it was just unprecedented things that happened. But across the board, they were all familiar with who we were, what Liberty Council and what we were about in our educational uh, outreaches. They were familiar with all of that, and they talked about what uh, I said at uh, Congress about these values of God. And, and these people now, these leaders are not all Christians. Some of them are agnostic. One of them was somewhat Marxist. Uh, and others are uh, different uh, levels. But the point is, we could communicate across shared common values, mm -hmm. no matter their political perspective. And they were very appreciative to us that we were there to help them in any way so that they could maintain that Judeo-Christian foundation. What we see is an imperialist America, a colonialist America under this Obama administration exporting anti-God, anti-values to these countries in Latin America and around the world. 
Liberty Council is uh, involved in this, and uh, we don't know exactly where it's going to be headed, but we do know that God has opened up some amazing doors, and we will uh, prayerfully consider the next step. Join with Liberty Council as we continue to stand for these principles, these Judeo-Christian values in America, and even now around the world. Continue to pray for Liberty Council. Any contribution that you give to Liberty Council between now and December 31 will be doubled. An anonymous donor has given us a great opportunity. Go to lc.org. You have been listening to Faith and Freedom with Liberty Council. We hope that we have motivated you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedom. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email updates. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom.